were to do a documentary on just a hockey stick, and hockey's <laughs> not the largest watched sport, it's just like how many people are going to watch something about a hockey stick when they don't even watch hockey anyways? So there's like a certain, agree. There's, a, there, there's a small I'd give some free movie ideas and I want you to rate them okay. and tell me what they're like. Yep. I, the first one is the, the Val James biopic. Do you know who Val James is? No, he's the first black hockey player in the AHL and it was in 1981. <laughs> I did. I, I think I saw something about this actually. I, uh, I love this story. I love it. It's almost like the Hank Aaron movie wasn't there a uh jackie no no i hang on jackie robinson there was a jackie robinson movie i, I forget what it exactly was called. i think it was called 42 yep i would imagine it would be along the lines of that kind of like all right there is a lot of black hockey players now and like jordan greenway i actually grew up playing against uh, uh jd or jordan no jd's his little brother actually <laughs> so he i played against him too and the the amount of um color that's coming into the game it's it's amazing it because like it's it's like hockey was like you had to you had to play or you had to have money to play in a sense so it was like the kids from minnesota with rich parents in edina or like uh, you know like the 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 growth of it is coming by state 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 whereas like Aust i read this article about austin matthews where if the Phoenix Coyotes wouldn't have been in Phoenix, he would not be playing hockey right now, right? Yeah. So it, that's an interesting thing where it's like the growth of the sport. I think it's very important to the growth, growth of the sport because soccer is the biggest, or I'll call it football. I don't want to get anybody mad. But it's the biggest sport in the entire world because you can have a ball and then two posts and then play, right? It's cheap to play. So – the I love seeing everyone and anyone playing the game of hockey and getting the opportunity to do it. So I think that doc will kind of like bring forward some like, okay, well, anyone can actually do this. Like anyone can do this. I don't know what it's going to take. I don't know how it's going to go, but anyone can play the sport. It's just, it's expensive to go get your first pair of skates, your twig. All right. If, if your twig's not, you know, top notch at two, what, what are they running nowadays? I, 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 I three ninety nine. There's four hundred dollar twigs right now. Yeah, if you want like an agent or one of these top uh, sticks that these guys are playing with, three ninety nine. Like when they're when they're coming out. Yeah. So when I was playing, it was like two seventy, <laughs> two seventy yeah. for like the new. It's still uh, average. The, yeah, yeah two seventy for the newest Bauer or something like yeah, that. Yeah, total and one. It was like, total one supreme. Yep. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. And so that was actually so I when I went and did that movie. Um, they gave us the fresh twigs from Bauer. I don't even, I don't even remember what, what it was. There was like some weird grip and it was like <laughs> almost like structured differently. And I was like, Oh, this is pretty sweet. Actually. I still have those twigs. And then my, my good friend, Ryan Norman played for the Gophers all the way growing up. And he just gave me like five twigs. So I'm going to be set for the next decade of my life with hockey, hockey sticks. But that is that's the barrier to entry where it's like, if you're paying $400 to try to compete with like the, the, the newest equipment, if you break one, well, that's rent for your parents. If you're, if they're not like well off, like it, it's a hard, it's a hard situation where if you want the newest skates, what are those going to run? 1500? Uh, I don't it's even still know. about a thousand, a thousand. It's not as much. Yeah. It, yeah. But yes, so that, could be fifteen hundred for kind some of a, trues. Kind of a tan, kind of a tangent, but like it, it's the barrier to entry to play hockey at a competitive level takes money, which is kind of like annoying. Because like, so I also seen a statistic that the NHL or the or hockey in America was the fourth largest sport behind uh, baseball, the NFL, obviously. Oh, there was there was one other one and then it was hockey but now hockey's dropped to the fifth most recognized sport in america now yeah so like it, it's going downward because the barrier to entry is not as easy i think i think soccer is actually more popular in uh, uh the united states than hockey now whereas five years ago 100 percent agree five years ago there i think there was like the la galaxy and like you know just like those 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 so but now minnesota has a uh, MN United or Minnesota United, like every it's growing at a faster rate because like there's just more audience to 
the uh the easier access sports so it's yeah i think uh, it would be it would be great if there was some kind of system to figure out like okay you could start playing hockey for cheaper but like i don't know what do you what are your thoughts on that is there any systems that you could think of i know you your skills yeah. camp and whatnot like yeah what are you going to tell your kids to, to order the hundred dollar stick and rather than the yeah, it's it, the <laughs> manufacturers is a whole thing because it's also all patented stuff too. Like they're fighting third party manufacturers now that make the interchangeable blades that go inside of your skates because they're like, oh, we designed that. It's like it's a hockey blade. Like, what do you mean you own the IP to a hockey blade? And so that's one side of the gear. And of course, it's getting more expensive, but it's also getting like less and less uh wide as far as a category like there it's only toe curves for sticks it's only like uh bulky lacrosse style gloves for hockey gloves it's only mm -hmm. uh you know a certain type of stuff like the vertical integration of it's like decreased it's all the same stuff yeah to, that, that's a good you know. point because like you're so to to go and play hockey you have to pay for the ice so whatever your mechanism to paying that off if it's men's league or if it's you know like your parents originally paying the association to have to go tens of thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours of ice over this this period of time that's that there's an upfront fee for that and then every time that you step on the ice you have to tape your stick and then use clear tape that well that's what is that i mean yeah five a bucks do a yeah. dollar a dollar or yeah. two every time they go on the ice and then you have to buy the new bio stuff steel every bio steel yep. hydration workout They're, they have a personal trainer they're doing a video scouting you know you got to have video of your practice to send to your coach you're sending that video to let somebody review it for 50 or 100 bucks you're paying to go to and a then showcase if you want camp. personal goalie training it's going to be yes well so like if you want personal goalie training in any other sport there's no ice involved you can go out to a soccer field and just pay the guy well you got to yeah. book the ice and then you got to pay the, the professional and it, it, there's just so much that goes into playing the sport of hockey on cost because it, everything that you play on is frozen. It takes money to freeze stuff, apparently. So it's, and it's, it's, it's an interesting. Yeah. And, and skating is hard. And I think that maybe this is a hot take. I think the, the reason why it's gone down is it looks cool and it looks easy. And one of the things I found out with kids is, everybody watches a hockey game and they say, this is amazing. I want to play this. I can do this. And then the second they get on skates and they get on the ice and, and they can't skate, they're like, this sucks. I can't do anything that I see on TV. It's and the this hardest instinct, sport to play. Yeah. Instant gratification society with TikTok and being able to pick something up and look good at it right away. It's not skating. And so they hate playing hockey. And so I think you get kids involved in hockey by letting them play lacrosse and foot hockey in school. And then like, you know, find the kids that, you know, you can transition. Cause there's guys that don't play hockey their whole life that are picking up the sport when they're 11, 12, 13, 14 now. Like I think that's maybe the way it should be when you can, you're there cause your body. You, yeah. You I'm know. pretty sure TJ Oshi didn't put on a pair of hockey skates till he was like 13 because he lived in California, did roller and then moved yeah. to war road, Minnesota. And then put on his, his blades, learned how to skate. And, you know, he's one of the best. So yep. that's in, that's interesting. Roller hockey may be the uh, some kind of answer to what we're talking about. But also, once we get into like movie ideas and whatnot that you have, uh, the roller hockey thing, and we'll, we'll talk about that. So I played. I that's what got me started. So in the '90s, I was born in '88. So when I was uh, like growing up, like I grew up in the golden age of hockey. You had Mighty Ducks. Mm -hmm. Our parents had all experienced miracle. Like uh, there was an expansion of the NHL throughout the 1970s. So like all these cities and like our parents got introduced to hockey on TV and hockey in different cities. And so they maybe tried it or saw it. And then we all got into the sport because roller hockey was huge at the time. Uh, and it was really easy to play and it made it for an easy transition. But now uh, you see like uh, Pat Maroon and all these guys that play roller hockey and uh, in, in also play in the NHL. And a lot of them say that that's the reason why they're such good hockey players because they played roller hockey. I actually think that a hot take roller hockey should be in the Olympics. And that should be the next Olympic sport. 
because like Spain, Italy, oh, yeah. Yeah. Europe, they all play that okay. probably better than we do. I like that, and I know I know one of my my but my buddies Marcel Godbout. Uh, he plays in the SP right now. I think he was like Rookie of the Year last year in the SP down in Florida. He lived lived and died by roller hockey because he didn't come from the the well off family. Uh, he's from Detroit, Michigan, a couple couple streets up from Eight Mile, actually Thirteenth Mile or something like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, his parents weren't necessarily well off to be able to just pay for this crazy amount of ice time, and and so he figured it out himself through roller hockey. So that's an that's an interesting take, actually. Like if that were to be an Olympic sport, that would be kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna do skateboarding, I mean, pickleball. Pickleball is probably the next Olympic sport. If we're being honest, I think that's the hottest sport in America right now is pickleball. But I, I know, I've seen vote. it. I've seen Danny Duncan. Everyone's playing pickleball. Like it, it's it's nuts. Uh, I played it in middle like middle school gym, and it was like super fun. It was like <laughs> ping. It was like it was like big size ping pong. Right. So I'm I'm a, I'm a pickleball fan. I don't know. What's your all right? So we'll stick on the hockey movies. What's your roller hockey hockey movie? What what you got? Uh we I wrote a script with some of my buddies to you know like uh, hopefully this gets done one day where we we want to shoot like uh have you seen the real Bros of Simi Valley? I don't think so. Uh, it's uh Jimmy Tatro. It's it's basically just a six to seven minute episode series i think it, facebook actually bought it for multi millions of dollars and then did different stuff to it but six seven minute uh videos on youtube where it's basically like showing after you don't make it in hockey what happens <laughs> and, <laughs> okay. and, you, and so it's like the concept is like having uh three people who are like nhl prospects not make it live in a house in california and they're all pool boys <laughs> they're all they're clean pools for a living but then they they start this uh roller hockey league and then it just rolls on from there where it's just very very funny stuff that i i hope we can make this one day that's like one of my dreams actually is to make a roller hockey like series not necessarily a movie but it's it, it would be like a series i'd give it five things of popcorn as a rating i love that idea do you remember yeah. the pro beach hockey do you know what pro beach hockey is yeah, it was in California, right? It was like the yeah, I I know someone who played in it, right? Okay, so there's two different ones. So right currently the Pro Beach Hockeys, they play I think on like Santa Monica Pier, or they pe- yep. play on the beach. And yep. that's one thing, but Pro Beach Hockey was something ESPN did in the like 97, 98, 99 where they set a hot a roller hockey rink up on the beach and it had ramps behind the nets. And so you <laughs> It's awesome. I'll, well, I'll, I'm going to clip in a thing in, uh, of them playing in here. These guys played in full hockey gear with the shoulder pads and everything in the middle of summer on the beach with ramps behind okay. the net and the hockey ball. And it's the most outrageous thing you've ever seen. <laughs> but I thought that would be yeah. a great document or like a docu series. Like it would almost yeah. be like one of the like the and one league if I could compare it to anything is like this rag. Yeah, tag. So, it sounds so if good. Anyone, if, if anyone's listening to this and has seen the real bros of simi valley imagine mixing that with hockey <laughs> there's, a, there's a good con there's a good concept that uh that that could be done um with that so yeah, yeah what, what else do we got we have more questions i got a right yeah i got a call i'm gonna rapid fire these ones and you tell me if you think it's yep. a good right, idea or not. and one of them you know what one of them i think i would i would consider casting you so i'm gonna save that one to the end and you can tell me what you think all right, so we talked about the Val James biopic, but uh, I have the, it's sitting behind me. What about a docu series on the Easton Synergy about like how they first started making the One Piece and who you know? Because this stick changed hockey, and I think everybody that played hockey in the nineties. I, 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 when I see that, I see the the lime green one. Is it lime green? It, it's, it's yeah, they, yes, green, yeah. orange, oh, silver. Yep, yep. Oh, and then there was the 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 almost like movement up the shaft of different colors, blue, red. Yeah, oh, man, yeah, that's a honestly. You it know, that, shocking. That's, that's that's the tough thing where it's like if you were to do a documentary on just a hockey stick, and hockey's <laughs> not the largest watched sport, it's just like how many people are gonna watch something about a hockey stick when they don't even watch hockey anyways. 
So there's like a, certain, there's, a there, there's a small niche of people that are like, oh yes, I used that. I'm gonna watch it. How many people actually used it though? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It. It's pretty pre- yeah. It. It's pretty prevalent. I think. I think it's the most popular, most like iconic hockey stick, other than Wayne Gretzky's aluminum. I would say so. I know. I know that. But I digress. Too. I digress. All right. So my next one is: Do you know who Scotty Bowman, the coach, is? He's one of the most prolific coaches, so like the 80s and 90s with the Detroit Red Wings, uh, and he won a bunch of uh, cups. I think that a, a Scotty Bowman biopic would be uh, really fascinating. I think he won eight cups between like player coaching. Was and there the any franchise. controversy that was involved? Yeah, like just one, his his style of play, and he's kind of an off-putting person. But two, I, it, what comes to mind is Jonah Hill plays everybody, and he would make a perfect Scotty Bowman. So that was the only reason why I thought ah, it would be. <laughs> that would be amazing. Great. Like, because he was great in Moneyball, right? Like, if you see if you see Moneyball, so it's like <laughs> that would be a iconic role as a for, hockey coach changing the game. It's, yeah, it's just super tough. You know, like it's just backtracking on like. Moneyball worked because it was baseball. Everyone watches baseball. Everyone did that. You know, da, 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 da. It, there's just these two demographics where it's like you love hockey or you love basketball, baseball, football. You can love both of them all at the same time. But there's just so many, you know, Miracle. What's the last biggest hockey movie that you remember? It was Miracle. That was like 15 years ago. That was like 15 years ago already. And there hasn't been a big hockey movie since. You know, for take it for granted that there hasn't been a big football movie either since like Invincible with Mark Wahlberg. Right. You know, so maybe you know the the sports niche is uh it needs to be accessed again. So like one of those ideas with Jonah Hill as the coach, people would watch it because of Jonah Hill, and then they might like hockey because they watched it because of Jonah Hill. So like you know, there's some good play into that actually. Uh, and I don't know how controversial he was. I think he's mostly just like a grumpy older person that didn't get along with the media and the cities and he was hard to understand so people called him enigma but he did change the way a lot of things were coached but i'm i'm just about to read his his biography so we'll i'll let you know how that goes the other one is did you know that in the 1970s an nhl team played a a two-game series in japan no, I did not know that. Wow. And did you know one of the teams was the Kansas City Scouts? Did Have you ever heard of the Kansas City Scouts NHL team? Did you know that the Kansas City had an NHL team? Nope. I did not know uh, that. The, they ended up uh, getting sold and becoming the New Jersey Devils, I think. Like, oh, okay. If, we, if you track down where the franchise went and the ownership. Uh, but in the 1970s, there, when the NHL did an expansion, they added like the Blues and all these other teams. Uh, they added Kansas City as a market. And for the first two years, I think the franchise was only there three years. For the first two years, they made them play like four games in Japan against the Capitals. And it's a great story about how the rink wasn't ready. The people in Japan didn't even care about hockey. Right. Like, and then you have like this new franchise. They draft all these new players and they're like, hey, welcome to Kansas City. We're going to ship you to Japan for the next month to start this season. Like, I always thought that was Ooh. an interesting story. OK, that's that's something I might have to look into because that's very interesting to say the least. OK, and and <laughs> and, and think about the I iconic views of what japan looked like in the 1970s you could do like cinematography with like all the cool stuff of tokyo and the billboards and that's a look gosh that would be so interesting because wasn't pearl harbor in like 60 yeah, it, something yeah, you, <laughs> and then you, you foreshadow there. the whole thing yeah and then your ship there like a couple of years like oh that'd be interesting that'd be an interesting thing and I think it was called the Coca-Cola Classic or the Pepsi Classic. It was like sponsored by somebody, but it it ended up ruining the franchise. Uh, Kansas City folded. We haven't had professional hockey at the NHL level since then. So I always like that story. It's a good one. And the last one I have here is we do Connor McDavid's draft year, but it's a bio my draft year. That's my draft year, not his. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I, I think you should play him. I think you would make a great Connor McDavid. That's what I was going to say is Nine, Connor McDavid draft birthday. year. There you go. Yeah. But everything that happened that year, like 
him being in Erie, I was in Buffalo at the time. He was selling out barns like Bedard is doing now. Like every single place that McDavid went to was standing room only, elbows to assholes, really took over. But then you look at who else was in that draft class, like Mitch Marner, yeah, uh, yeah. Dylan shout, shout out to my shout out to my uh, friend Alex DeBrincat. Uh, yep, he played in Erie with McDavid. <laughs> and I, I've actually played with him, talked to them. Like we we're familiar with each other enough to where I don't, I've never met Connor McDavid surprisingly. Cause I played, you know, across North America, essentially uh, Canada, United States, like everywhere that you can play me and McDavid never crossed paths. Surprisingly. <laughs> I, I played with the Brinkett. I played with Greenway. I played with, I played with a lot of, a lot of like P, uh, Clayton Keller, uh, Arizona Coyotes me and him played against each other when he played for Shattuck and I played for uh uh an elite league team in Minnesota like I I played with everyone but McDavid never made it into North or uh, the United States it seems like he always was in Canada doing his thing doing his thing so I think that class or that that draft class it would be a very interesting thing so I think like Jeremy Bracco was in it and a bunch of names that kind of like sizzled sizzled out right. uh, because it was mcdavid then matthews correct or uh, or is matt eichel right it was eichel right yeah, yeah. okay it was... the, the, then austin was the next year because he's the 98th right. birthday okay so yeah but, yeah eichel. like but 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 they were talking about like the canadian player and the american player the year before uh yeah, exactly, with them exactly. and that's what made i think made austin matthews like a bigger deal it's like oh no we want american players to go first overall we want them you know yes i think i think you're accurate on that statement actually because now i now yeah it was eichel and eichel went to buffalo at number two uh-huh. and well it didn't yeah, really turn right. out very well and I, right and i think D- uh dylan strome i think was three yep, strome that's Pat Chase, uh friend. And then uh, da, da, who else? Uh, uh, da, da, mm-hmm. Noah, T- Noah something. He was a defenseman. Gosh, I can't remember. Uh, uh, I'm getting old, Tom, man. I, I know. I'm trying to think. I think uh, the uh, San Jose Shark Hurdle. Uh, to, was, to, was that Tomash Hurtel. Yeah. Uh, Mitch Marner, Hurdle. I like did. I pulled up a tweet from that year, and I think I even tweeted that year. I was like, dude everybody's talking about McDavid and I listed the top 10 players and it was great. I think Hannafin. Yes. Hannafin. Yep. He was, he was in the mix. He was in the mix and that's good buddy. Yep. That's Pat Shea's good buddy. So a lot of players did come out of Boston and they're actually in the league. Me and me and Pat Shea have this very, very funny debate going on. I don't know if it'll ever end because like my, so like, you know, summer hockey when you're growing up, right? Like my team that we accrued, was like top of the line at the time. <laughs> so Marcel Godbout was the best hockey player in the world for a 1996 birthday when he was like 14 years old. Ryan Norman was top five in the 1996 group two. Mitch Slattery, all these kids that we had on this one team, it was basically an unstoppable machine, right? Um, we were we were winning games like 18 to nothing against like decent teams for Minnesota. And we like we never lost a hockey game in like three years. Like, yeah, there's some funny stories about Marcel showing up to games drunk and scoring eight goals. So that's, that's the OK. So that's the movie that we need to make. You just gave me the plot for it. That's how we're going to finish is your team. What was the name of your guys's team? Miracle Gold. Shout out to Shyamalan. <laughs> Miracle um, Gold, the movie. Miracle Gold. Or, or actually, this team started as Raging the Raging Bulls, so that's a better name, I think. Oh yeah. And then we 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 they eventually just like turned it into Miracle Gold. But this this '96 team, I'm a '97, so I played up because I just was like cool with all these guys. And we 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 still are all friends today. But this is where it gets the interesting debate with Pat Shea is we debate if his summer team is a 1996 group, 1997 group would beat our team. <laughs> because there is six guys from his team playing in the NHL right now, but there were also nobodies when we were like playing summer, right? So like Hannafin, uh, Jeremy Bracco, uh, there a couple of kids that played for Boston College, like because Pat Shea is from Boston, and then himself who is still playing in the E right now, 
and uh that we just debate back and forth i know i had the best summer team ever to exist <laughs> and he's like no we did we would have we killed you i'm just like no no you didn't we would have killed you <laughs> and so we just go back and forth back and forth on like oh you know i had the best players but then then he his argument is well half my teams in the nhl right now it's like ah, fuck. Like, <laughs> that's <right."> true <laughs> right <laughs> so we have it. a debate it's, it's good stuff it's good stuff but you, you have to ask me about uh a movie scene uh, and i uh I think you. I think you had a note that something about a an ideal movie scene, and I already I already wrote yeah. one in my head before. Yeah. This. So personal let's, experience. Let's, let's talk about let's talk about some top movie scenes that you think, or some iconic hockey movie scenes that you would rate. Uh, I'll go first, so you can have a chance to think about a couple. Of mine are a little eccentric, so I think that the uh, shootout scene with Gordon Bombay and Mighty Ducks. Where he's, you know, that's yep. obviously one of the most recognized hockey scenes ever. Also, I have a lot of questions about that scene because why would you let a might player take a shootout without a helmet? Regardless. Yep. Iconic oh, scene. Was... <laughs> okay, so I'll get into this. So Chris Nelson also was on the Mighty Dogs. He did the Way of the Warriors movie, Miracle. He laughed about all of that stuff so much, but it's basically just the director back in the day thinking that no one knows. If you look in one of the Mighty Ducks scene when uh not Charlie but uh what's Banks. So Banks goes down the ice and he turns left but then it cuts and he scores as a right-handed <laughs> shot. But then if you look at Banks, he's a left-handed shot so it's like that right. was a stunt actor. That's that that wasn't even in the kid. <laughs> so there's you know like those old movies basically were just it was just Hollywood. That's that's where Hollywood was at the time so it's just I don't look too far into those because I love those movies, but there's like clear, like, this isn't realistic at <laughs> all. Whereas like Miracle, everything in that movie was pretty damn realistic other than OC running down the ice on fucking crutches because he's, he's got a bum knee. No way he would be on that ice running down. Like there's no way right. the coach would ever let him on the ice. <laughs> right. OC's playing, baby. <laughs> <laughs> there's just, it's just no way. So... <laughs> uh and i don't Those know why are two like, iconic ones right and i like watched that recently and that's only what made me think of that is like now watching it all these years later i watch it and the one the congruity isn't that what it's called congruity between the scenes like where they're totally different and like nobody was yeah, paying yeah. attention but also yeah. like the the rural skill set like offsides hooking tripping charging like all these. i'm mm. like that's not even so I digress. My second iconic movie scene that I think that everybody can recognize is the car scene from Wayne's World where they're out in the street and they yell car like that might be the most uh, popular hockey phrase, I think, in pop culture. It doesn't sound yeah, like it. Yeah, because yeah, when, yeah, I, I would. Everybody says car when a car's coming. It's like car. Yeah, I, I think you actually might be right. <laughs> on that one where it's just kind of totally totally different from any kind of like hockey film or show or that's just like that's like oh, that yeah that's <laughs> kind of threw me off on that one <laughs> i know right i told you that i told you they were off the wall and so my last one is the hansen brothers just the one shift like not the whole movie slap shot but that one hansen brother scene where they're skating around and they're elbowing guys on the boards and they run it and paul newman's like hey where'd you get these guys like just that one scene i feel like if you ask people to like identify that people they're like oh that's hockey and this is slap shot so those are my iconic ones what do you got foiled, what are you cooking foiled up knuckles. foiled knuckles um i like the mighty ducks when they're skating uh rollerblading through the mall of america because i'm from <laughs> minnesota so i'm like oh my gosh like that's actually the mall of america oh there's mickey's diner i like mighty ducks because it took place in minnesota and that's where i grew up so like all of that stuff is actually really real other than like the the on ice stuff where it's like oh well that was kind of kind of cheesy but um other than that miracle is my favorite movie hands down because it's like it seems like the realest hockey movie ever ever filmed um her brooks i actually grew up with uh a kid named john masage who his dad is um or no his grandpa is like john masage that played at the university of minnesota and he's a legend and whatnot and her brooks actually passed away driving back from his cabin 
So I went to that funeral and I, you know, I was, I was involved with like some Herb Brooks things. And then his, uh, his son um, actually came and spoke to our team. I met him multiple times, showed us all the gold medals. So miracles kind of like my, my, my top notch, obviously. Um, but there's another movie called, um, gosh, I don't want to push this, but it's, yeah, I think it's called Indian horse. Uh, it, it's a native hockey. Movie. Yes. Yes. I and, think you're uh, right. Um uh and uh what, John Wick, what's his name? What's his uh, what's the actual name? What's John Wick's name? The actor. Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves. Keanu yeah. Reeves played the goalie in that movie and said zero words. That's how early it was in his career. He played the goalie in that movie and said <laughs> zero words. <laughs> and so it's kind of cool to be like, wow, that was like his first movie ever, and it was a hockey movie. I'm pre- yeah, and so I'm pretty sure like Patrick Swayze played like the main character, and the, the hockey footage was terrible. But the, the the that movie, I like that one. I, I do. That's my like third. So, love it. I've got a series on my other channel, hockey shit, about like movies that you didn't know were hockey movies. So I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'll I'll read those off to you, and uh, these are good. I I'm surprised that you haven't you didn't hear about that one. So Big Daddy is a hockey movie. Did you know that? Big Daddy, like Adam Sandler. Yeah, so not only is he wearing an Adam Graves or, or is an actor wearing an Adam Graves jersey multiple times in that jersey, there's like two iconic scenes uh, with like the kangaroo song. He's actually watching a Rangers uh, Tampa Bay hockey game and it was a real hockey okay. game that actually happened. And there's like numerous hockey references. So I think Big Daddy's a hockey movie that most people don't know. The other one okay. is Clerks, uh, Kevin Smith's Clerks. They have the hockey scene on the roof. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Uh what do we got? Some other ones. Uh old school. Uh there's the Vince kitchen Vaughn. scene. Yep. And of course, like Will Farrell's a huge LA Kings fan. He's been to a bunch of, of games. Snoop Dogg's a huge hockey fan. He's in that. Uh Vince Vaughn's in that. That actually segues into the other one. Swingers is a hockey movie. Did you know that? No. Yeah, they they sit down and they play NHL ninety four is one of the iconic wow. scenes in that. And it's like oh. they talk about Gretzky and they're like, hey, uh, I'm going to make Gretzky's head bleed because in NHL 94, there was a cheat code where after he scores a goal, you could have a certain player and you'd hit him in his head and it, he would like bleed on the ice. And it was like this thing, every, a cheat code everybody knew or Easter egg. So Swingers is a hockey movie. Uh, I did, I'm doing a whole series on all these movies. Uh, Lethal Weapon 3 is a hockey movie. Did you know that? No, no, I didn't actually. <laughs> they, yeah. So there's a scene where they're uh, Mel Gibson and Joe Pesci are chasing down a criminal at a fictitious LA Kings game at the Coliseum, and they chase him out onto the ice, and they stop the game. And it's actually, I reviewed all the hockey footage from that. Like, it's pretty correct. Like the skaters are actually skaters. Like the penalty that yeah. they say is a penalty they might have just is got a penalty. Permission. They might got a permission to like film at the because I know the Mighty Ducks. One of their scenes was actually filmed at a North Stars game, so they just got permission to film at the game. Actually, you know what I mean. So I right. imagine that, yeah. That's yeah, I'm cool. doing I'm doing a whole series because there's like a lot of other movies. Everybody's when I start to say like, "What's your favorite hockey movie?" People say the kind of the same movies, but there's a bunch of movies that have hockey scenes in them that people don't call hockey movies. That I think are hockey movies. All right, so. To kind of like finish finish it off, I want to give you my hockey movie idea. Do it. And this is and this is the first time anyone's ever heard of this. Like this is the first time you're getting you're getting the uh, you're getting the, the the dirty details on. Well, not cut that part. <laughs> you're, get, right. you're getting the, you're, get, you're getting the you're getting the first look on what my hockey idea is, and it actually happened to me for a hockey script. So. I was growing up, I was playing uh, hockey at Andover High School at the time. I was the captain of the team. And believe it or not, I had a girl goalie who was the varsity goalie. And she's now the uh, Olympic gold medalist and starting goalie for the United States team, Maddie Rooney. Um, She sat next to me in the locker room. Okay, And we had always been friends growing up and whatnot, right? About halfway through the season, we kind of started dating. (laughs) <laughs> and no one knew no one not a coach not any of not my other captains we were just kind of low-key just like we sat next to each other on the bus you know we were just uh you know we were just those two lovebirds and we started dating halfway through the season 
and <laughs> it all oh, man we could write the shit out of a script that 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 went into it but it yeah she ended she ended up going to uh university of minnesota duluth um doing well there and she became the starting goalie for the united states women's team and won a gold medal and uh she it had, all started with you uh, <laughs> that's not why believe me but like she did she did very very well in her hockey career but like how we started dating in high school while playing together, sitting next to each other in the locker room is a whole movie in itself, you know, and then her going on to be, you know, the best women's goalie essentially in the world. Then, you know, like that, that's pretty cool. I think so. That's, that's, yeah. how, there's a script, there's a script in that, you know, I it's think. a love story. It's a love story. Yep. It's got rural yep. reversal. It's a happy ending. And who knows, you guys might end up together one day. You never know, never to close the, close the door on that <laughs> chapter until it's over. Uh. <laughs>